A little while ago, I did a build with the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth, and I kept thinking to myself, this cooler looks an awful lot like the Noctua and HD15. So my next thought was, I wonder which one of these is gonna be better and which one costs less. Let's find out. First of all, the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth has been out for a few months and from the outside looking in, it feels a little bit like Cooler Master's trying to make a comeback. And at the moment, we're seeing companies like Deep Cool and Scythe really killing it with their air coolers. And for me personally, both my editing and gaming PCs both use Noctua air coolers because for me personally, they've been bulletproof. There's no question about that. Now, as far as comparing this cooler here, this Cooler Master cooler and the D15, there are some physical differences. The D15 has six heat pipes, whereas the MA824 has eight heat pipes. The main difference here being that the Cooler Master Cooler has more heat pipes, right? More's gotta be better. But as far as thermal performance, as you're about to find out, the difference really isn't as much as you'd think. And speaking of that, the main question people ask with these tower coolers is about RAM clearance and GPU clearance as well, because as GPUs get bigger and as RAM modules get higher, this is a big consideration for using an air cooler. In the case of the Noctua NHD 15, in dual fan mode, it's pretty average for clearance. I think that Cooler Master wins here because the front fan is only a 120 mil fan and RAM clearance isn't much of an issue with that. You can move it up and down to create a bit more clearance. The fan doesn't sit close enough to the RAM in its default location anyway, so I think you're going to be fine. There's also something about the height that I'll come back to later. The same can't be said for the D15. You can technically also fit a 120 mil on the D15, but yeah, it's not something that you see very often. What I'm guessing next is you guys wanna know how this performs compared to the D15. All the tests are run on this open air test bench here with the Core i9-13900K. It's got the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX and if we want to test these coolers properly, we gotta make them hot. The 13900K was set to its stock clocks for the purpose of establishing a consistent baseline. We also use the same size thermal compound for both of these coolers, so the thermal interfacing would be consistent. For these tests, we let both systems idle for one hour with each cooler installed to get a proper idle temperature, and then we use IDA64 stress test for one hour for each cooler, so we get a proper set of temperatures for a fully loaded CPU. Now, we don't have a lab, however, we do test these coolers in a very logical way. All the fan speeds were set to the performance fan curve in the BIOS to remove any potential differences. And I know someone will ask about how this performs acoustically. Both of these coolers were quiet even when they were running at 100% fan speed. Our ambient temperature is set to 18 degrees in a climate control environment. The temperatures recorded here were both the core temperatures and the CPU package temperature. And we also recorded the max boost clock that we observed with these tests as well. But let's start off with the core temperatures. We ran both coolers with a single fan as well to even out the playing field so you guys can see that here. At idle, we recorded both the average and the maximum temperatures, and it's pretty clear that in all five of these configurations, they're all pretty close to performing the same as each other. And that's basically what we're gonna see at idle. The outliers here are both of the coolers with single fans with their max temperatures, but overall it's kind of like not a metric you really need to worry about. And remember, these are idle temps, they're just not as important and also the fan noise can be tuned for silence as well. So you can push those numbers up as well. At full load though is where we see the largest differences. While we didn't record any thermal throttling, we did see that the three dual fan configurations being the most efficient, especially with the Cooler Master MA824 in its default configuration being one degree cooler than the D15 in its default fan setup. So just take that into account if you're using these coolers in their default configuration. All right, on to the CPU package temperatures. At idle, we recorded both average and max again, and it's pretty clear again that all these five configurations are pretty close in performance. And as mentioned previously, it's not that important and fan curves can play a big part in this as well. But as I mentioned, we set a default fan curve. At full load, we see very high temperatures. That's to be expected. And 
Just keep in mind that the 13900K is the kind of processor to use all of your thermal headroom. It'll use every little bit possible. But this is where it gets a little bit interesting with boost clocks. Now I recorded the max boost clock for all five of these configurations over their one hour stress testing period. The three configurations with dual fans boosted to 5,500 megahertz flat. Now, I was surprised to see all of them hitting this frequency given the max turbo and the boost is between 57 and 5,800 megahertz. And on air cooling, this is actually pretty good. But what's more interesting here is the fact that both single fan configurations didn't boost to those levels. Here's the thing, there were still no reports of thermal throttling at all. So I think this is quite consistent overall. Given our testing, it's pretty clear that with both of these coolers, they're about on par with each other for the performance with slight variations at idle that will ultimately not impact the performance too much. The thing is as well, the 13900K, if you've got the thermal headroom, the CPU is gonna use it. Also remember that the max temperature for the 13900K should be around 100 degrees C and realistically, you're not gonna run into a situation where your CPU is gonna be running at 100 degrees. That's the point of these tests, to show you what the case would be after an hour. Okay, numbers, benchmarks, all that aside, the reality is, which one of these should you choose if these were both coolers you wanted to choose? Now, this one comes down to the price for both. The performance is just so close. And in the US, the MA824 Stealth can be had for around 99 US dollars and the D15 for around 109 US dollars. In Australia, it's slightly different. The MA824 Stealth can be had for around 179 Aussie dollars and the D15 is going for around 175 Aussie dollars. The thing is with both of these coolers, they're both great. But if I had to choose one, which one would I choose? I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I would choose the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth. And here's why. Firstly, the design. The color of Noctua coolers doesn't bother me at all. And I know it bothers a lot of people. So the neutral look of the MA824 is nice, but I'm saying for the majority of you, I know that a black cooler is nice. You also got the Chromax version as well for Noctua. So there is that. Secondly, the MA824 can be installed without removing the center fan. The Noctua cooler requires the center fan to be removed because the MA824 has screws that go all the way through the heatsink, making installation a lot easier. Basically just screw it in from the top and you're good to go. Lastly, although it's technically possible to install a 120 mil fan on the D15, as I showed in this video, the MA824 has better overall RAM clearance and since you can change the height of the front fan without really changing the overall height of the cooler. This is just a nice to have. And keep in mind that if we're measuring the max height, the MA824 Stealth is slightly lower than the D15 with the fan installed. It's like three millimeters, so there is that as well. Overall, as I say with all these videos, I can't make you do anything. If you like something, you buy it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. But let me know in the comments which one of these two coolers that you would choose and which one would suit your needs better. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, say the word subscribe properly. <laughs> I said, sub blah, 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 blah. I don't want to say it anymore. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I am your CPU cooler testing boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. You know what, Claire? It's been about three years since we've just done a video about CPU air coolers. Like it's been that long, maybe three or four years. I don't know, like it's been a while. Mm. And I found this one interesting mainly because when you look at these two coolers, obviously the Noctua one is still on the test bench, but when you look at them physically, they look so similar. And I can bet you that Cooler Master was like, hey, the D15 looks cool. Let's also make one that looks like that too. Yeah. I think Cooler Master's done a pretty good job with it. And it's nice to see that Cooler Master is making decent coolers again. I mean, they always kind of have, even with the Hyper 212. But if I've got one thing to say I don't like about this cooler, get rid of that damn Cooler Master logo on the top. Like, get rid of the, just have the Halo thing. Don't have it say Cooler Master. Because it just looks like it's from the 90s. And I know the 90s is a cool thing right now, but in tech, it just, no.
Get rid of the logo. That's my only feedback for Cooler Master. Everything else is fine. Thanks for watching.